On this week's episode of Whitetail Cribs, we stopped to visit with Pennsylvania native Jason Say. Jason is a small business owner that has built his life around his passion for the outdoors. Get ready to see a newly built home loaded with memories. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. The Exodus team is traveling around the United States to take a look inside the trophy rooms of some of the most interesting whitetail hunters in the country. From giant bucks, unique racks, and riveting stories, welcome to Whitetail Cribs. Hello, come on in. Hang up your coat. This is my dog, Hager. <laughs> He's obviously really excited to see everybody. And my wife, Liza. Uh, all right, we're gonna hang your coat. I guess before we start, you're gonna see a lot of stuff of my kids. Uh, and that's one of the most important things to me. We're gonna talk more. This is uh, my son, Colin, and this was his biggest turkey ever. And we're gonna show that turkey up in his room a little bit later, but let's take a walk. All right, this is the guy that greets everybody. Uh, this is Boo Boo. Um, beautiful cinnamon phase bear I shot in Alberta. Uh, was, you know, not my biggest bear ever, but as you can see, just a beautiful coat. I had to get a full mount done. So my wife always complains because she sits there to watch TV and she says she gets to stare at a bear butt all the time, but uh, she's just gonna have to deal with it. The other thing we like to say is he ends up being the laundry bear and it drives me nuts because the kids' rooms are right upstairs. My wife just thinks this is where she's gonna throw their laundry to pick up. It drives me crazy, but I guess it's a fair trade-off, so. <clears throat> this is, I guess, what they call the great room, and uh, I guess I'll tell you a little bit about the floor story. Uh, when we put these floors in, they're, they're soft pine floors, and when we were first put, we wanted that barnwood look, and everybody was telling me, well, you, you know, with, with pine, it's soft, it'll chip, it won't look good. So they said, you know, I started researching distress in your floors. And I was like, oh, that looks like fun. That's a good idea. So anyway, to make a long story short, my wife wouldn't let anybody help me with this. So I had a chain that I put nuts and bolts and hooks in it. And literally, I'd come in and I would come for like maybe two hours a night. And I'd take that chain and I'd throw it and I'd pick it up and I'd throw it twice in the same spot. And then I'd move over this far, pick it up, throw it, pick it up, throw it, and my back has never been the same. But the floors turned out really well. We were really happy with them. So uh, I know my wife was too, but my back has never been the same. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so this here is, is the first one. This is uh, my biggest elk. I've been really fortunate over the last seven years, I've shot an elk with my bow in New Mexico uh, with a group called United States Outfitters and uh, have had some phenomenal hunts, but this was one of the most wild, crazy elk hunts I was ever on. They were all with my bow. And this elk and two other elk were chasing a hot cow through some thick stuff. And I mean, there's just bulls screaming all around us within 20, 30 yards as cows running around us. <clears throat> and finally, this bull, the biggest one in the group came and he gave me a a window to just slip one through and I was able to make a shot, but uh, just a, a beautiful, beautiful elk, super pumped to take them. So I have two more elk that are at the taxidermist. As you can see, I'm saving a nice little spot over here on the wall um, for an elk I shot here just a couple years ago. It was a big elk and then I'm doing a pedestal mount down in my basement and I'll show you in my office. So um, you can see our, our face important to us. You know, you'll see a lot of stuff around, um, you know, different signs and things like that as well so all right so this is the kitchen um the one thing you know when we did this my wife designed almost all this house I told her the only rule was I didn't want a co compartmental look I wanted it to be completely open so I wanted the kitchen area to be open into the living room and she did an awesome job now some people when she told me she was putting white cabinets in a log house I was like no way it's gonna look awful it is really grown on me. I love it, but everybody's different. Some people are like, I hate the white cabinets, and some people are like, I love them. So, but anyway, I think she did a good job, and the, the kitchen really turned out. And we have the uh, dining room back here, and um, it all turned out really nice. Spent a lot of Thanksgivings and Christmases. We have the family over for that stuff. I'm fortunate um, this place is built on the farm where I grew up, my mom and dad's farm. Uh, they were nice enough to 
give us a few acres to build and, and people should know, you know, we're by far not rich or wealthy. Uh, I worked in healthcare for 14 years and um, I was getting ready to get a promotion there. My wife was eight and a half weeks, or eight and a half weeks, eight and a half months pregnant. And I went home and I told her, honey, I'm quitting my job at the health system and I'm gonna go hunt for a living. And like I told these guys, she sat in the corner of her closet, I think for two days, just rocking back and forth. And uh, we, we struggled for a long time, and, uh, but things worked out for us. I also, I have the, the show Wired Outdoors, which I'm fortunate to do what I love and hunt for a living. Uh, but I also have an agency that I do uh, web development, social media marketing, video production development, all different kinds of things. And we worked really, really hard over the past years to, to make this happen, and it wasn't easy, but it, it was all worth it, so. So as you can see, this is just a, it's a small piece here, but it's a little thing that's, uh, I'll probably get choked up. <laughs> um, geez. Uh, so my grandpa, he passed away a year ago. And uh, he's the one who took me hunting. Jeez, jeez. Um, he took me hunting. He was just the, the, he was a World War II vet, just one of those guys, an awesome guy. He would give you the shirt off his back, and uh, we lost him a, a year or so ago. And um, still hurts, but... <clears throat> We're always going to have that up and remember them. So. Sorry about that. Jeez. <laughs> so let's go outside. We're in Pennsylvania, and uh, we had no snow on the ground yesterday, but just wait a little bit, and we have uh, like three inches. So This area we spend a lot of time on. This is our deck. You can see I have my grill here. Um, down in, we'll go down and look at this a little bit later, but we put a pool in last year. Um, we have a, a, a patio that we love. We did the stamped concrete. Of course, you can't see it now with the snow and stuff, but spend a lot of time there in the summer. The other thing we did last year, too, was I got tired of mowing the banks, so we river rocked all around the house and the banks, and it turned out really nice as well. So let's take a stroll through. I'll show you one of my favorite parts. Again, we, we spend a lot of time out here in the, in the summer and spring. We have the speaker set up so that we can have our Bluetooth connected, listen to music, um, hang out, and, and have a good time. This out here, everybody seems to like this about the most in this house is <clears throat> we shoot our bows off the deck, and I have these targets set up at 20, 30, 40, and 50, and we spend a ton of time out here. My wife and my, my son, my, my daughter Addison uh, got a bow now, so we spend a lot of time out here shooting at the targets right off the deck kind of realistic like hunting from a tree stand kind of that elevation so then the last thing out here is we put this in is we have a you can walk down off the deck here we put a fireplace over there and we spend a lot of time there as well so that's the deck although well the one thing i did want to say too is you see here now it actually is kind of pretty with all the snow but this in the fall is, it's absolutely beautiful. It, uh, it lights up and it is, uh, it's gorgeous in the fall. It's actually kind of pretty right now too, I guess. <laughs> as much as you can say snow's pretty in February because it kind of gets old this time of year. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go into the master bedroom. So this is the master bedroom, and I've watched some of your other videos, and guys said some things about what goes on in here, but my wife will kill me, so I won't, I won't talk about that. But uh, the master bedroom, and uh, yeah, and we love how it turned out. You know, when I designed this house, I said there's two things I'd do different. I'd make this room just a little wee bit bigger, and of course, as a man, I'd make the garage bigger. But other than that, everything's just about perfect for us, so... <clears throat> Just some wedding photos, family. This, uh, people love this, you know, and, and what I'll say about this is, this is the bathtub that I told my wife she would not use. And you, I'm not right about everything, but I was right about that. I think she's used that twice in her life. Uh, but I do, she designed this shower and it's just a walk-in, stand-up shower. And uh, I do have to say, uh, she did a really good job with that. I love it. So, if we could get rid of this tub, you know, let me know. <laughs> so, before we uh, head down to the, the basement and look at some of my bigger mounts, we're going to head upstairs to the uh, kids' room. And uh, we're going to get to see some of their animals and some of the things they've done over the years. So, let's head upstairs. We put these steps in. I really wanted to have the open steps. You know, I thought that was really cool to do that. So really like how the steps turned out. 
So we're going to head up to my son Colin's room, but this picture means a lot to me. And you heard me talk a little bit about my grandpa. Um, he died the week before this, and I took Colin on his first trip. He's 14 in this picture, and he was the youngest guy in camp to ever shoot a bear with his bow. And it was just an awesome experience. It was, it was an emotional time because, like I said, my grandfather just passed away. And to have him up there and do that was, it was just a great experience. So this was the bear that he shot. Again, it was, uh, like I said, he, we hunted with an outfitter up there, and Colin was the youngest person the guy had been outfitting for 25 or 30 years. Colin was the youngest kid to ever shoot one with his bow. <clears throat> so pretty cool experience. <clears throat> now, let's talk about this. This was really special. I mean, I, I've been sitting with my kids on all their hunts, and we're from Pennsylvania. So when you see these racks, we're not from Iowa. Um, these are a big deal to us, and anybody from Pennsylvania understands. But this was Colin's first buck with his bow, and he made a perfect shot. Again, just a, you know, you're going to hear a lot from me. There's nothing more important than family and hunting with my kids and stuff. And the lucky thing for me is having the show Wired Outdoors. I have all these suckers on film, so I got them the rest of my life. But, uh, but yeah, that was his first buck here in Pennsylvania with his bow, and which was a pretty good one for Pennsylvania. A couple other things you see, you know, just some of his, you know, bucks. This was his first buck ever um, that he shot. I, of course, I was with him for all of them, but this was his first buck that he ever got. And let me talk about... This turkey here was the one down in the picture. You can see he had a great beard on it. This was his first turkey ever, and I'll never forget this hunt. One, because it was his first turkey, but mainly because of the hunt itself. I was there. I had a camera guy, Andy Traster, was with me, and, and I was off to the left, and we didn't bring enough chairs, so I'm sitting on the ground, and it's slanted. It's like a hillside. And so my, my legs are asleep. Like they're flat out, not awake. And, and this bird comes in and it was kind of a humid day. The camera got like wet on it. And it was just a weird day, but this bird comes right into the, to the decoy. He ends up making a good shot with his crossbow, but the birds out there flapping. And the last thing I wanted to do was his first turkey get away. So I whip up that blind and I go running out of there. And I thought, I mean, I thought I was going to die because I'm going down a hill. My legs are asleep and I'm a big dude. And I felt like I was going 100 miles an hour. And I felt like, I mean, I'm going to go over. I'm going to go over. And I never did. But then we got back and watched the footage. And I kind of realized how slow I really am because I wasn't going fast at all. But it was an awesome experience. He came out. We were hugging. It was his first bird ever. So really, really super cool. So. Okay, so now we're going to go down to my daughter's room, the little princess. You're going to be able to tell by the room she has, too. And she doesn't have a lot of animals in here, but she does have one. I want to tell you that story. So, so this is my daughter's room. You can tell this is it's a little girly in here, but uh, she loves to hunt. And I'm going to tell a story. This is her very first buck. And uh, you can see there it says Addison 2017. Um, and I'll never forget the hunt. Uh, what a what an experience. And uh, I don't know, just a daddy with his little girl is just something special. And uh, this deer came in, and she made a she made a great shot on it, and we recovered it. And I did what, what a lot of dads do. I kind of was not saying anything, and I could see the deer, but I was letting her trail it and letting her trail it. And, uh, you know, and finally she said, there it is, you know. And I'm like, oh, and we hugged. And, uh, and of course, I got emotional and started to get choked up a little bit, but I'm a, I'm a sentimental fool. But... Um, super awesome experience with her. And I do want to say she got the turkey bug now too, because yes, last year I took her out turkey hunting and we had six jakes and a long beard come in and she was hunting with her crossbow. She's just a little thing and she wasn't quite ready for a shotgun. And these turkeys all come in and of course it's chaos when you have that many birds and trying to get a new turkey hunter on it was tough. And it was just at like 35 yards and I wasn't comfortable with her, you know, with the crossbow. But as these birds are coming in, she whispers, Daddy, Daddy, my heart's beating so fast it feels like it's going to come out of my chest. And I was like, that is awesome. You know, and that's that's why as dads we do it. And, uh, you know, then after that, the the, the bird, you know, like it, it didn't happen. We didn't get the bird. And she looked at me. She's like, I get to go hunting again, don't I? And I said, yeah, you came to the right guy. We're going to get out again. So she got bit by the turkey bug. So this year we're going to get her her first turkey, I hope. But uh, it's awesome seeing your little girl love to do what you do. So uh, it's pretty awesome. All right. So let's head out to the garage. <laughs> go see a bunch of hunting stuff. So as you can see, 
uh, we're big archery hunters here, and we all shoot Matthews. This year was awesome because my daughter started shooting a, a, a vertical bow for the first time. She shot most of her things with a crossbow, but she started shooting a bow with us. Um, my wife's bow, my son's bow, my bow. We have my Oz chamber here, which, you know, a lot of guys like to see your setup for hunting. I never have to go in the house. You know, I come home, throw my stuff in, hit it with the, the Oz, and I'm good to go. I come out, dress out here take off um so that's the oz chamber and i wear this thing out i use it all the time um over here you can see all these bins and bags every single one of them is full of of clothing of hunting clothing and when you start taking you know all your family members and you need <clears throat> lightweight midweight heavyweight literally and you can see how i have them organized i have Midweight Jason, you know, new clothing, Scentlock base layers, Rainwear, uh, Addison and Liza. So, like, I mark all of them and try and keep them organized. It doesn't take long during hunting season for everything to kind of bust loose, but I do the best that I can keeping it organized. And then <clears throat> over here, just a, just a bunch of my hunting products. You know, I keep, you know, my broadheads, a lot of my Matthew stuff. I'm a big believer in Thermacell. They're not even a sponsor, but uh, <laughs> everywhere I go, I mean, if you've never used that to keep mosquitoes away, you'll see a lot of that stuff there. So um, up there, that is probably the first pretty decent buck that I shot. And he would be in the house, but when he was in storage, he uh, fell over and there was some water damage on that other side. So I figured that corner of the garage was the uh, perfect place to put him. So, and I guess I'll show you in here. I don't know if we'll be able to see it, but my family pretty much lives off of pretty much lives off of elk and venison and, and all that. And we keep that right here in our freezer. Um, you know, that's the only hunt I go on every year on my elk hunt where my wife tells me don't come home till you have one because she's a big believer in the, you know, the all natural stuff and the elk meat is just phenomenal. So we have two freezers. There's actually one here and there's one downstairs and they're chock full of wild game. Um, my fridge in there, not, we don't have quite as much in there, but this is kind of where we, we entertain and stuff. And it's more for my brother than anything because he uh, comes up here all the time and cleans me out. But that's that. So that in a nutshell is the garage. You can see it's beautiful out here in the landscape. You know, we don't have many neighbors too close, and that's always nice. Um, you'll see here against the shed, I have some antlers. This was a... This was a big caribou I shot. It was kind of my first big game, and I'm honest with people. I didn't get it mounted because I was poor. <laughs> I just didn't have the money. I was barely able to afford the trip, um, but I keep some of these out here, and then three more elk. I've been pretty fortunate to shoot, and I think I mentioned it already, but I've been able to shoot seven elk for seven years in a row with my bow, and that's, uh, that's pretty tough to do, but only so many of them will fit in the house, so... So now we're going to go down to the basement and that's uh, obviously at one of one of my favorite places like most men. So was heavily involved in a charity for years and this was one of the first kids we ever took on a hunt. We took him on a moose hunt in Maine. His name was Douglas Fickle and uh, just an awesome, awesome kid. Probably it has to be the most awesome hunt I was on. It's hard to compare like the hunts with my kids and stuff, but any other hunt, it was just an unbelievable hunt. He made a great shot on a big moose and uh, just an awesome, awesome kid and a, a great experience. And i um, super proud of the work I was able to do with the, the charity and sending a bunch of kids and vets on hunts like this. So, Okay, this is the man cave. It's my basement, and I'm gonna take you around, and show you, show you some of my mounts, and talk about some of the stories of the pictures on the wall and things like that. <clears throat> Just a few pictures. Um, this here needed to dust this guy. Uh, this was my son's first turkey. Uh, you heard me talk about that hunt before, but what an awesome hunt! This is his first deer ever that he shot. Um, he was nine years old in that, and that was the first deer he ever got. Then this was his first year he ever shot with a rifle. So that's kind of the theme of that picture collage. That was all my son stuff. Um, this was a buck. I'm Again, I'm from Pennsylvania. And this was a, a buck I shot. It was actually three or four years ago. And you look at it and you're like, ah, why would you shoot that? It was the last day of archery season. And 
I'll be honest, he fooled me a little bit, and I think a combination of being the last day, and he came in, he was all rutted up, and just, you know, his neck was big, and I'm looking, and I'm looking, oh, yeah, you know, last day, he's a shooter, but it was an awesome hunt, and uh, yeah, I was I was happy to take him, but again, a, a Pennsylvania buck. You'll see this, um, all my buck I've shot with with my Rage broadhead, and I really thought this was a cool plaque to, to put it on, so. All right, there's the spare bedroom. This here was my biggest turkey ever. Uh, I just thought this was a cool mount. A little easier to keep clean without doing the, the head and things, so I decided to do this mount. But it was a double beard. You can just th see just thick. Had inch and a inch and a quarter spurs uh, for Pennsylvania is really big. So This buck here was the very first buck we ever shot at Wired Outdoors on video, so it was pretty sentimental to me. Uh, he came in. It was actually the first day of the hunt at three in the afternoon uh, i was just sitting there just got in the stand came walking down made a good shot and he went about 50 yards so first ever buck shot on wired outdoors this one here is it's my favorite buck for numerous reasons one it's my biggest buck two it's a pennsylvania buck it's a 154 inch pennsylvania buck the the story behind this guy was <clears throat> you would you would say oh you know i hunted him for years it was one of the hardest bucks i ever got this buck was one of the easiest bucks I ever shot. I never had a deer more pattern. He was in one of our, our white tail stoop food plots every single night the month before season. And I was dying when I got the wedding invitation from my wife's sister, my sister-in-law. She decided to get married the first week in archery season. And I mean, I was dying because he was there every night. And the, the wind was right. Everything was right. Conditions were right. Of course, come back home from the wedding in Pennsylvania knows you can't hunt on Sundays, dumbest rule ever, but you can't hunt on Sundays. Wind shifts, I can't hunt Monday. I can't hunt Tuesday. Wednesday, it was very marginal, but I'm like, man, it's gonna they're gonna start changing. We went in and man, that didn't that sucker show up and it was one of the most nerve wracking hunts. We had, I think it was seven or eight does in there, and then five bucks came in. I mean, and it's a little food plot, it's a quarter acre food plot, and they're just piled in on us. But this sucker came in. I'm like, oh, it's never going to work this many eyeballs. But he came 37 yards. I drew back. I almost threw up after I got him. I was that excited because, you know, when it, it's rare. We know as hunters, more times than not, the plan doesn't work out. Well, in this case, the plan worked out, and I, I was able to get this big buck. So it was, uh, it was just an awesome story, you know. And I never, like I said, I'd like to say, oh, I chased this guy for eight years. And, you know, I've been so close so many times. He was actually probably the – the easiest one ever because he was so patterned, but it was a really cool hunt. And a 154-inch buck in Pennsylvania, as anybody knows, that's a that's a really big Pennsylvania buck. So, And I have – actually, it's going to be going here where this turkey is, and I'm moving a turkey over there. I have a, a really nice buck that I shot this year that's at the taxidermist right now that's, that's going on that wall there. So, I got some pictures over here, family stuff. Um, this picture here, again, is that – this that caribou that I was talking to you all about that's out on my shed and you can see just a, a beautiful caribou. That was kind of the first big hunt that I did with wired outdoors where we went on a trip and I was really fortunate to take a big caribou like that. And then some family stuff, my brother, my sister-in-law, a couple Turkey, stuff like that. So a couple, couple European mounts again, just a, a really nice nine pointer. Um, it was a great hunt. Uh, again, this was one that was early in the hunt. And uh, the, the cool thing about this hunt was this was the first time I ever used a tracking dog. And this buck came in, and he was all oh, nine yards away, and he was slightly quartering to me. And it was really the only shot I was going to get, let it rip. And we tracked him for like 50, 60 yards, and I just decided, you know, hey, let's, let's, let's play it safe. And uh, my buddy actually had a tracking dog, and I, we would have found him probably regardless. But I'm like, man, I really want to see a tracking dog work. He brought in this wiener dog. And you're looking at this thing, oh, wait, is this wiener dog going to find this deer? Well, this deer went 500 yards. And that wiener dog went through swamps, boom, 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 right to him. So it was a really cool experience uh, to, to find him that way. This is just another Pennsylvania buck, just a, just a solid eight-pointer. Um, shot him probably seven, eight years ago. Um, nothing big, but good Pennsylvania buck. Now, let me show you. I'm going to open my gun safe. I'm going to show you my favorite gun. And it's probably not what most of you are going to think it's going to be. <clears throat> All right. So, if you're from Pennsylvania, this might not surprise you, but this is by far my favorite gun to hunt with. This is a flintlock muzzleloader, 
And I've shot a bunch of deer with it now. Uh, I just really got into muzzleloading about seven, eight, maybe nine years ago now and have been fortunate to shoot a lot of deer. But um, it's kind of funny when you talk to people outside the state of Pennsylvania, they're like, why would you hunt with a gun from the Civil War that might not even go off? But if you're from Pennsylvania, it's just kind of a tradition. Guys from PA, you know, they, they understand it. We actually even have a season for late season uh, flintlock hunting and uh, just my by far my favorite gun. All right, it was nice having you guys here, but you know what? It's time for you to get going.